are going on now to uh, Mary Cooper's garden in Castro Valley. So uh, Mary has, uh, this is her before, now, a small uh, garden in the Castro Valley that um, was designed and installed by Pete Bayou. Uh, you can see on the background here, a beautiful electric blue California lilac. Um, and in the foreground, the pink is a pink flowering current. And those are both keystone species on uh, Dr. Tallamy's plant list. Um, Mary has been uh, coming on the tour as a registrant since 2005. She was inspired by the tour to change out her garden, um, which was installed in 2007. Mary has seen, um, since she's changed her garden, white crowned sparrows, house finches, recently bluebirds, not blue jays, but the blue bird, which is a cavity nesting bird that is declining in population, uh, came to bathe in the fountain. And um, I will turn it on now to Mary. So, hi Mary, how are you? Hi, uh, just great. Glad to be here. I have been enjoying the, the other people's gardens and really, really inspired by um, Dr. Talmy's talk, which I had seen before, I had seen the original um, on your website, but today he was just fascinating. Awesome. So here in the back, uh, let me turn around here. Sorry, just a moment. Let's see if we can get the camera turned around. Maybe yes, maybe no. Okay, this is a street view. This is a street view of my garden. Um, I actually don't look at it from this direction very often, but since my neighbors do, I thought I'd show you. Um, I live at the top of a hill. There's my garage. There's uphill from me. You can see it's a very suburban neighborhood. Sorry for going quickly here. Not the most interesting part. Um, very suburban Castro Valley neighborhood. I would say that I am probably a zone 16 on the sunset garden zones because I have a lot of bay influence and then a little bit of um, inland influence. And um, one of the things that I'll be pointing out as we go through this garden today is how it's matured and changed over uh, the time since it was put in 13 years ago. Um, so I wanted to point out this really lovely plant that I just put in, um, this beautiful Vesalia. Let's see if I can figure out how to get it right there. A lacy leafed Vesalia. Let's see, yes. Um, lacy Vesalia. Ooh. It's backwards in the picture, isn't it? Sorry about that. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is kind of walk around the garden. Oh, I will, I will mention that um, I haven't yet removed this uh, large Hollywood juniper, um, which creates a lot of shade in this zone. But after hearing the talk about um, the importance of native trees, I'm beginning to consider replacing it. And here's a toyon and uh, that has really shaped up beautifully as we walk around here. Um, also visible from the street is this nice um, mimulus, this orange flower and some of my Douglas irises, which are finishing up for the year. So it's nice we're here this week and can see them. Then I'm gonna take you around to my favorite view of the garden um, where I can see the larger structures in the, the larger plants in the garden and also the kind of open areas, which makes for a great bird watching zone. I like to park right here and um, in the driveway and just watch the birds. The rock with the, um, there, that rock, um, which looks like it has tar in it, is actually in my drip fountain uh, water source. And I'll be talking a little bit more about that. Um, so sometimes I just sit here when I get home and watch the birds. That's when I saw the bluebirds drinking and, and uh, bathing in the fountain. And at the same time I was watching them, 
over here in this little island, I saw a pair of wrens. It was a really good bird day. When we moved into the house, um, this island had a uh, blue cedar in it, which was just taking over the entire property. So there've been a lot of things here. Um, tried a manzanita, which didn't like the um, cementy nature of the hole. So we ended up putting in some smaller things. There's the uh, Artemisia montara that people have been talking about, Artemisia california, californica. And um, a bush lupin and then this puddle is my attempt to create a butterfly zone it's basically mud and water and a little bit of fresh cow poop which i collected at a local park um, in an attempt to attract more butterflies i have a lot of butterfly host plants but I don't see a lot of butterflies in the garden yet. And so I'm doing everything that I can to get maybe more species involved. Um, and I have high hopes for that. So panning over here again to my fountain and this zone of my garden where I have kind of a variety of plants. Um, here is my leafy reed grass, Calamagordis foliosa. I don't know why my names are all backwards. Sorry about that. But um, basically, it's a bunch native bunch grass. And next to it is a blue eyed grass, uh, a mini blue eyed grass called Cisrinchium Devon Skies. And then the drip fountain. Pull back a little bit from this in the hopes that you can see it dripping. Um, basically, it has. copper coil with quarter inch drip line running through it and I control the rate of dripping with a little manzanita twig. I find that if I get it to drip about once every five seconds um, it still attracts the bird the motion of the water attracts the birds and yet my five gallon uh, jug will last two or three days full of dripping. So it's a good balance. And I'll show you the jug as we go through the rest of the garden. Um, here is a really pretty red mimulus. Hello, are you there? Mary, it seems like you've frozen where you are. We cannot hear you. And, probably uh, a hybrid. Oh, let me stand up and see if I come back. Yep, you're back now. OK, okay. sorry about that. Um, I like this open area because it gives me a chance to put in some flowering plants, little low things, and do some experimenting. Um, you can see a blue-eyed grass here of the more normal, just vellum variety. And here are my coast sun cups. Um, a beautiful spring blooming yellow flower that um, dies back in the winter and comes back every year, very satisfying. And the alum root or coral bells, I've heard a lot of pronunciations of the Latin name today. I'm going to skip that since I can't figure out exactly what it should be. Um, I'm going to go just a little way into the garden here. There's the beautiful structure of my toyon, which is um, has great berries in the fall for the birds. Um, you can't get a very good view of it with this light. But here's another one of my Douglas irises. It's a little shady, but you can see the gorgeous color. And the reason I'm walking in here is that I want to show you two different plants. Um, this is this red blooming tubular flower here. 
is um, Penstemon centrantifolius or scarlet bugler. And I was in the garden um, just the other day, standing about four feet away and a hummingbird came up and she was just dipping her beak into each flower. And every time she pulled out, there was more white pollen on her beak until it just looked like she had a completely white beak. She was having such a good time and just spreading that pollen for all she was worth. It was very satisfying. Um, in the background there is my Dutchman's pipe vine. And I'll sh I actually clipped a little sample of that so that you could see it up close when we get back to the side of the garden. But I wanted to point out here is my, and the light again is not so great, but you can see the reflection there on the glass. Um, that is the water source for my drip fountain. You can see the quarter inch drip line coming out of the jug. It goes all the way to the bottom of the jug inside. And then siphon action just keeps the water flowing to the, um, to the copper coil, as long as the jug is higher than the place where it drips, the water will keep flowing. So it's very, very low maintenance and very easy to take care of. Mary, can you just uh, show the great drip fountain again since you're right there? Somebody was asking for that. I would be happy to, excuse me. The uh, drip line runs through the open area of the garden. There's a little bit of it that got unburied. And then here, uh, the light is just so awful right here. But let me come around here and see if we can see it from this direction. There's a good view of the coil. Um, I just, I got quarter inch copper tubing at Home Depot. And it comes in a, a circle about 12 inches around. And so I slid the quarter inch strip line through that copper tubing and while it, and it's very soft. So then I just gently um, shaped it with my hands into this coil. So it would stand up above the rock. And um, I used to use a, um, an automatic drip system dripper on the end, but I found that I like the stick um, stuck into the tubing better because I can control the rate of drip more and it actually um, gives a more consistent drip than the plastic piece did. And it looks more natural. Um, I got my husband to carry that rock up from the stream bed under duress. So it has to have a pride of place in my garden. I'm gonna take you over here. Um, and if there are any other questions about that, I'm happy to answer them. Um, it's been a great source. In fact, um, besides the bluebirds, just today, while I was um, getting ready for this for the talk, I saw a crow washing its food in the water there. Um, so it's popular with all the birds that I get. Um, I wanted to show you something else that I just discovered today. Um, my garden is extremely popular with bees, particularly bumblebees. And I have this piece of driftwood here. And I looked down and there under the driftwood, let me see if I can get this shown to you, is a pile of um, sawdust. And that is because a carpenter bee is making a home in the back of that piece of driftwood, which I thought was really cool. Um, oh, I wanted to show you a sample of the pipe vine flower and fruit. So I clipped this off my pipe vine yesterday. Um, this is the flower. You can see it really does, oops, sorry about that. It really does look like a Dutchman's pipe. And originally, it was thought that they were, um, that they ate bugs, carnivorous. 
Now scientists think that they attract um, fungus gnats who crawl inside because it smells funky in there and get all dusty with pollen and then come out and spread the pollen to the next flower. And this is the fruit. It makes these big pods. It's probably three and a half inches long. Um, and in the fall, it will, um, the sides will split and it will spread the seeds. I haven't really gotten any new seedlings yet, but they're very pretty. Um, and very satisfying. How do I get water to flow from, while we're looking at this, I'll just give you a view here while I talk. Um, I use a very primitive method. I suck, <laughs> I shouldn't, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but, but because it's clean water, I um, suck on the drip end of the quarter inch tubing until the water comes out. I don't have to do that. I really only have to do that once in a very long while because if you don't let the water run out, um, it you don't have to restart it each time you fill the jug. Um, I'm sure you could use a pump of some kind if you were really uh, more technological than me. This is the um, uh, hummingbird sage that a lot of people have talked about. It's very satisfying because it does bloom all year long, um, mostly right now, but continuously a little bit all year, except for the deep of winter. And it's very pretty, but it is kind of floppy. And so it's, to me, it's best as a background plant, um, but very, very satisfying. And I love hummingbirds. So I'll put in anything that they're attracted to. And then it has the benefit of the bees and the other insects as well. Um, I just wanted to finish by showing you a little pot, a little vignette of pots that I put out. I like to have something right by the entrance to make it look pretty here. And this is a Luisia, Luisia cotyledon. Um, it does very well in pots because it's basically a kind of a rock rocky zone or rock garden plant. And so it's uh, very happy right here. And next to it is a little native sedum uh, succulent that I got at Pete's. He said it's actually a local variety. I haven't pinned down this species yet, but very satisfying. So that's my garden. Um, and Kathy, thank you for putting in the time and effort to have this great um, virtual tour. Well, Mary, thank you so much. And thank you for showing your garden. I am envious of your sun cups. I've always wanted <laughs> sun cups. They're actually thought to be pollinated by ants. It's a rare and interesting plant. I know it came from uh, Pete Bayou's garden at East Bay Wilds. And um, your low-tech gravity-fed water fountain is really interesting. And uh, I have heard that one of the most important things for wildlife in our urban areas is to provide clean water for birds and you certainly show that that happens. Mary, if you're able to go to YouTube and answer some questions, that would be um, terrific. Yeah. And thank you so much for showing us your garden today. Thank you. And enjoy the rest of the tour. Thank you so much.